Since one senator has a message for his Democratic colleagues, it's time to get spending under control. Well, here now is our friend, Indiana Democratic Senator Evan Bayh. Mr. Bayh, welcome back, sir. Good to be back with you, Larry. Uh, look, I love this message, get spending under control. And I, I want to couple it before we get to some of the details in the weeds of this health care stuff. As you know, the dollar is sinking on foreign exchange markets. There's a lot of talk about the dollar's demise as a world reserve currency. In your view, is that related to the overspending and the uh, over debt creation? No question about it, uh, Larry. As you know very well, when the global marketplace becomes saturated in dollars, foreign creditors look to diversify and hold uh, something other than dollar-denominated assets. And your previous panel talked about the rising commodities, particularly gold, possibly other things. There may be other options out there uh, for reserve currencies going forward. So this is potentially very harmful to America. It can raise interest rates going forward and uh, make uh, our economy uh, more sluggish as a result. What are you thinking about here on these themes, sir? I mean, I think you're just head on dead right on your analysis. What are you thinking in terms of policies? Because spend and restraint has not been a great theme. And I don't want to make this partisan. Republicans, Democrats, uh, Bush administration, the current administration. What are you, Evan Bai, thinking about proposing? Unfortunately, overspending is a, a bipartisan affliction on Capitol <laughs> Hill, Larry. And so, look, uh, since the Democrats are in control right now, I think substantively and politically the smart thing to do is to uh, show some spending restraint. Uh, the first thing we can do is to make sure that this health care reform does what the CBO said it was going to do, and that's actually begin to get the deficit down. Uh, and we need to be very careful about amendments that might change this going forward to spend more money. And I think we have to have an enforcement mechanism in there, Larry. There have been mm -hmm. pledges for spending reductions in a variety of areas, but there's not much teeth in terms of actually enforcing that on future Congresses. So they might change their minds. And I I'm going to insist on an enforcement mechanism in there. And then assuming the economy has gathered some steam next year's budget. Th I was very disappointed. I was the only member of my party, one out of two or three, to vote against this year's budget, against the omnibus spending bill, because the rates of increases in spending were two or three times the rate right. of inflation. We well, can't yeah. afford that. So we have to put into place things like a spending freeze on domestic discretionary spending next year, a real health care reform that's going to get the deficit down, hiring freezes, a variety of things that, you know, governors like I used to be have to do during these tough times all the time. But Washington all too rarely can. Senator, are you getting some help on the spending freeze and the hiring freeze? Both very good ideas across the aisle, your own parties or anything. These are great thoughts, sir. Any real political teeth in them? It will be difficult, Larry. I mean, the political class, uh, you know, this does not come naturally. But uh, you'd be surprised. I think people are beginning to understand that government has to do what businesses and families have to do each and every day, and that's make ends meet and economize and show thrift and frugality when that's in order. So once the economy uh, continues to show uh, sustainable momentum and growth, we have to quickly pivot and focus on getting the budget deficit under control, and that has to begin with real spending mm -hmm. restraint. Senator, let's, let me ask you quickly a couple of things that I think you support, but not in the bill so far. Interstate insurance, deregulation, interstate insurance, and malpractice reform. I believe you support that. Tell me if I'm wrong. But I, I don't see that in the bill, and I'm disappointed. I think those are necessities. Well, uh, I'm all for competition. That tends to get uh, prices down and quality up. So allowing insurance companies to uh, compete across state boundaries makes a lot of sense to me, unless there's some practical reason I'm aware of that it just wouldn't work. Malpractice reform, a lot of doctors, you know the story as well as I do. I don't see that on the, on the cold print yet. Well, we have malpractice reform in Indiana, and it's worked pretty well. And, you know, there is the, a lot to be said for the, uh, even the president has spoken about this, the whole defensive medicine issue, driving costs up and that sort of thing. The reason it's not in the bill, Larry, is that no one has stepped forward and said, look, if you put it in there, I'll support the bill. So the people who tend to be for it say, well, I'm for it, but I still won't vote for it anyway. And that's why it's not on the table. You know, a um, couple of items that just look pie in the sky, according to a lot of political analysts. Uh, the, the tax on the high-cost so-called gold-plated insurance companies. That's in the CBO numbers. Most people think it will never survive. The unions hate it. Others hate it. Second, huge cuts in Medicare and Medicaid, including the choice uh, Medicare Advantage. They say they'll never make it into the bill. And the cuts in physician fees, very deep cuts in physician fees. Now, this stuff is all in the new CBO scoring. But do you believe any of that's going to happen? I mean, just people are very skeptical. Well, uh, skepticism about Washington, D.C. is always in order, Larry. But uh, let's go down the list. Uh, the Cadillac so-called gold-plated plans, yes, I do think that will remain in there. Hmm. There may be some blowback on that, but that's one of the things that economists tell us will begin to change. The, we currently have, as you know, an incentive 
in the tax code to spend more on health care. This is one of those things that will begin to level the playing field when people make uh, health care purchasing uh, decisions. Uh, the second thing you mentioned was the Medicare, Medicare, um, particularly the Medicare cuts, huge Medicare cuts. You know, what, that seems like political death to the Democratic Party, and it's very unpopular. What's your take on that? Well, a lot of the things, uh, you, you mentioned the Medicare Advantage plans, and that's a little bit different. And Senator Nelson from Florida, where they have a lot of seniors, had some ideas about how to uh, uh, soften the impact of that on the people who belong to those particular plans. But a lot of, th a lot of the, what's being called Medicare cuts right now, the following is going on. If you add 30 uh, million people, uh, to pharmaceutical companies, uh, patient, hospital patients, you know, doctors, patients, and so forth. You add a lot of volume, they can afford to make the same profits while still giving up some of their profit margin. So really, it's not a cut. It's just them agreeing to accept a little less in payment because they got more volume coming in. So that's the, that's the kind of theory there. And that's one of the reasons many of those groups I just mentioned uh, agreed to these proposals. On the doctor side of things, uh, you know, uh, the Congress has a soft spot and it's hot for, hard for the docs. I would keep an eye on that one. Doctors are getting killed, and a lot of them are leaving the profession. And they're scared about this whole deal. You know, it's like they're going to leave the profession. So we're going to treat more people with fewer doctors. I well, they don't, want the government, they don't want the government to tell them how to uh, practice medicine. Right. And, you know, with all due respect to my colleagues, I would suspect we're not terribly good at that anyway. You going to vote for the uh, Baucus bill as matters now stand, sir? Well, I'm not on the Finance Committee, Larry, so I'm going to have to vote on all these amendments on the floor. But I will say this. I'm going to insist that it actually get the deficit down. And the thing I'm going to focus on most is what does this do to the cost of premiums for people who currently have insurance? I want to make sure we don't inadvertently do things that will actually make those costs higher rather than lower. All right. Great stuff, Senator Evan Bayh. As always, sir, we appreciate your time very, very much. Great to be with you. All right.